Welcome to the Hired Geek Podcast. I'm Dustin Ramsdell, and every week I'm having conversations with influential hired leaders about the work they're doing, the impact they're making, and how you too can better implement technology to support student success. So today uh, is going to be a treat for me. Just always nice to chat with a fellow higher ed podcaster, somebody who kind of lives and breathes the space, somebody I've collaborated with before, to kind of uplift what they're doing and just the awesome person that they are. So this is uh, yeah, going to be a good one. And we'll just start out as we always do. Rob, if you want to introduce yourself, kind of your professional background, kind of quick elevator pitch of kind of who you are and what you do, and then we'll uh, dig in a little bit deeper. All right. Hello, Dustin. Hello, listeners. I am excited to be on this show. My name is Robert Lee. I am the co-founder and CEO of University FM, which is a podcast production agency for higher institutions specifically. I also say you know, I'm from Michigan. And where that ties in is I got into podcasting as a student at the University of Michigan, where I was a DJ. So doing honor shows, doing live music mixing, eventually got into audio storytelling, a little bit of podcasting. You know, that's the origin story of how I got into this industry. The business itself, I'll just mention really quick, right? It's co-founded with uh, myself and my brother, Sean, who at the time was studying at UC Berkeley. And we both got into podcasting at our respective campuses in different ways, but eventually came together to, uh, or realized the opportunity to help institutions tell their stories better. Yeah, I mean, just, kind of similar origin stories of sort of just like playing around, you know, like I was doing radio TV stuff back in high school. And I think that was always just some muscle memory of like, you know, kind of the, almost like the vulnerability of like, you know, putting yourself out there, creating content and all that sort of thing. And, you know, it's just always been a very fulfilling thing ever since like starting, you know, at this point as a recording of it next year is going to be 10 years since like the very first podcast I ever did, which is why I did this like hired geek is in most of those years, which is also just like, this crazy constant through line of like, you know, different jobs and everything, but just that idea of, you know, and I've talked with so many people about launching shows and doing stuff like that, but like there certainly would be like an alternate universe version where it's just like, Oh, that was just a thing I did in college. But like, again, like you just recognize the power of, you know, storytelling and talking to people sort of their experiences, their perspectives and everything. And certainly higher ed has no shortage of like really interesting, smart people. And, you know, just these brands that, kind of stand the test of time and how can we kind of help sort of modernize the way that people kind of engage with them, know about them, know what they do, the impact that they're having and all that really cool stuff. So I guess, yeah, if you want to talk a little bit more about like the work you do, I guess, because that's like kind of a natural segue. Yeah. Well, well, let me, let me tack on to what you're saying. Like there, there are so many amazing people on a college campus. There is such a huge variety of topics to discuss. There is so much kind of innovation happening and just like big ideas growing on campuses. So our, our our very first show was with UC Berkeley, the high school business, and it was a, a student podcast and then a alumni podcast called One Haas and Here at Haas. And that was a show that started by Sean. And that was just because of this, of this recognition that, wow, there are so many amazing current students and alumni coming from this institution that are doing amazing things all around the world. I love to connect with them and also just learn how they got there, right? And like how they view the world and how they think about the world. So so that's how the podcast started. And when we, you know, the more or at that point, you know, we were working directly with the alumni engagement department. And then I also realized, wow, okay, these podcasts also serve a wonderful way to connect community, you know, across different class years, across geographies, across industries. So it serves that purpose of community engagement. Uh, and it also serves this purpose of, you know, as a side, like, you know, donor cultivation and supporting the advancement office at a larger scale. So when we first started out, you know, we were called Alumni FM, actually, and this rebrand to University FM just happened uh, earlier this January. And the rebrand happened because as we're working in more and more schools, we realized, okay, there's a lot of potential for podcasts in other realms on a campus. With Marcom, for branding, with student life, just to share the student experience, and even with faculty and professors, more of the research angle of, of storytelling. So again, there's just a huge plethora of, of amazing people that you can talk with to get their stories out there. 
And I know you asked me the question, right, about what, what do we actually do? So, okay, at a, at a very high level, we do strategy, production, distribution, and monetization. So depending on who we're working with at a university, you know, we, we do the strategy with them to figure out, okay, like who who is this podcast for very specifically? Why does this podcast exist? What kind of needs is this podcast serving that's not served by maybe some other communication outlet? Um, down to the branding of the show. Like what's the visual and sonic brand? How does it relate to the university brand as a whole? down to the episode planning of, hey, who are some guests that would make a great fit? You know, who are the top, what are the topics that we want to cover? And then, you know, when we get into the production pieces, then it's helping them with the setup of the interview itself, prepping them for interview, working with them to do the working with them during the interview itself to make sure everything goes smoothly, the post-production elements, of audio editing, story editing, video editing, the copy, yada, yada. And then when it gets to distribution and monetization, well, that's looking at, okay, how can we place these podcasts on interesting networks, for instance, or how can we build partnerships with different podcasts in a similar space? So I just said a lot, but big picture, anything podcasting related in the higher ed space is what we're working on. Yeah, which is incredible, because I think, you know, like I said, speaking with enough people, because they're curious about starting one, you know, may just be like people independent and trying to do something. It is even the idea where it's like, you know, I've done it for years, where it's like, I personally do start to finish every piece of it. And knowing there's like, just enough of a learning curve, you know, to kind of get started, and then just sort of the keeping it sustained in the long run and everything. And just the idea of like, you know, an institution wants to do it right, wants to do it well. And just the idea of like, does this marketing team or does this alumni office or whomever, do they fancy themselves basically a like mini podcast production studio? Like, are they going to get the gear and spend all the time on the strategy and all that kind of stuff? And it's like, maybe, you know, some places are maybe big enough and they'll, you know, do that. But I think there's so many institutions, so many stories to tell and different things like that. It just, you know, makes a lot of sense where it'd be like, this is something earnestly we want to do, but we just need some help to do it. We just lack the expertise or the time or the resources to like carve out a space, you know, because it's like you probably will literally need like a physical space to like, you know, even if you're doing all the recordings virtually or whatever, you know, all that kind of stuff. So that is really fascinating. And I guess like <laughs> my brain thought of like a funny sort of thing is like the my version of doing that would be because like part of it. I've always like, oh, I'll help. Maybe I'll do producing and I host some other shows and all that where it's like maybe early on kind of setting the tone for many reasons where it's like somebody from your team or like one of your alumni should be like hosting the show. And it's like you, Robert, or whomever, like I can't host all these shows or whatever. Else. Like that's like a good clear line to kind of set early on because again, it adds to like the authenticity of the show and all that. But like I don't know, just like sort of funny pieces like that, because it could be like, we can help you with everything else, but what if your people will need to like, you know, hop on to, you know, whatever platform to like facilitate the interviews, but we can help with like, you should talk to this person about this thing and, you know, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I mean, I, I will say like, it's very, very often in higher ed teams that, you know, there's very limited bandwidth. Lots of people see the value in podcasts in some way. You know, depending on what their overall strategic goals are, and they don't want to do it, they may just not have possibly know how to do it, or maybe they do have the know how, but just not the capacity to take it on consistently. And that's the most important thing, right? Consistency with the publishing schedule, with the production process. You did, you did touch on this a little bit. Like when we work with university teams, we, you know, from a host perspective, because I, I do often get the question like, hey, who should be a host? It's never somebody from our team. It makes the most sense for, for it to actually be somebody from that college or university, right? Someone who actually understands the culture of that community. And I just expound this, like usually as long as we have that host person and we have one, one, at least one person dedicated to the podcast in terms of just like content strategizing, then okay, we can make it work. Well, it happened again. 
prospect Paul is excited about attending your institution, but is getting constantly confused by all the information and tasks he needs to complete to enroll, creating friction and even worse, melt. You knew this would happen again, which is why you've been flagging the need for a come to Jesus meeting with leadership from marketing admissions and IT to audit the digital experience for prospective students. Here's the problem. You're not going to convince Mark from marketing to let go of his automation software. Adriana from admissions just got set up with her new CRM and Isabel from IT is still working through ticket requests from last Christmas. What if you could come to the table with a solution that didn't require anyone to let go of their software while at the same time ensuring a frictionless experience for prospects and current students alike? Well, my friend, guess what? Today's your lucky day. Meet Pathify, an innovative higher ed engagement hub that puts students at the center of their college journey. Pathify sits at the center of your school's digital ecosystem, being the single user experience interface tying together all systems, content, and communications. Their engagement hub elevates the information that matters most and pushes systems like the SIS behind the scenes where they belong, making it simpler for students to discover and engage with the opportunities your institution provides at every step of their higher ed journey, from prospect to alumni. What's even better, Pathify has a mobile experience that provides 100% parity with the responsive web app, so your campus app is always in sync. Pathify is a platform that every stakeholder on campus, from marketing to admissions to student affairs to IT, etc., can get equally excited about. Learn more about how Pathify is uniting strategic units across campus and bettering the entire student experience by visiting pathify.com and be sure to tell them that Dustin from Hired Geek sent you their way. Yeah, I mean, and that's like, I mean, for a lot of these kind of collaborations, whether it's a ed tech technology tool or a podcast production partnership, it's just like that one champion. It could be the same person who is the champion and also the host, even just to like start off. But yeah, I mean, just, yeah, consistency is the thing that I always strongly encourage people who are just like, well, I think I might want to start a podcast or whatever. It's like, you got to figure out what that consistency is. And, you know, that can look different for everybody. But obviously having that champion and that person um, is going to be kind of a critical ingredient to that. Um, and I think we've kind of talked around this a little bit, you know, already, but to sort of put a finer point on it, to sort of bold underline circle, all the above, like, leveraging content creation like this, you know, because it could achieve sort of a variety of goals. So I think just sort of, you know, digging in with some of them here of like why leveraging content creation like this is so important for institutions. Cause I love the example of even just like monetizing it because I think it can just fall into the portfolio of like, usually an alumni office might produce a magazine where they sell ads, you know, to whatever variety of things. So it's just like, this could just be another sort of like platform that you can do a similar thing to. So it could be achieving that goal in addition to a number of others. But so content creation like this, why is it so important? Like what, what are the impacts? What are the outcomes? I'll, I'll kind of answer this by highlighting like what makes a, a podcast unique from other mediums. Because oftentimes, like, sure, we work on a few podcasts or like magazine compliments. But yeah, what makes the podcast unique from a magazine, from a video, from like a newsletter, these type of things? I think one of the main elements for a podcast done well is that they have, there's a very strong authenticity factor. The host themselves has a pretty strong personality that carries through. One of one of the oh, let me use this example, right? Maybe in the advertising space, advertising with podcasts is seen as more effective than say a placement within a magazine or like your thirty seconds before a YouTube video. And a big reason for that is because people really attach themselves or or learn to trust the hosts and wherever the host is recommending you know, the, the listener really, really takes that to heart, right? Because it's focusing on this authenticity factor behind the voice and not so much on like a big brand picture, I guess. When it gets down to storytelling, you know, authenticity is another big factor, right? Like the ability, the ability to dig deep in conversation with somebody and ask deeper questions, right? To practice that active listening to get the heart of the conversation. In the university space, like it's on the podcast that we work on, you know, just just to use use an example, like there's a episode of the "I'll Have You Know" podcast produced by Rice Business, 
where one of their guests was an alum. And, you know, long story short, while she was studying at Rice, her home caught on fire. And her kids and her mother passed away from that fire. And she came on, you know, she came on the podcast to, to share, to talk about that experience and how it, you know, drove her to doing what she does today, you know, in, in a variety of like charity and like nonprofit functions. But like that type of story, I mean, it's so personal. It's so emotional. I find it hard. I, I, would, I would find it, it would be so hard to convey in writing. You could pause, you probably do it in video, but like that's just a whole different element with like a visual factor. But something about just the audio formats allow that conversation to happen. And, and that's powerful, right? That's powerful. So, authenticity, big factor for the podcast medium. And when it comes to content creation, more, more broadly speaking, uh, yeah, I mean, a, a huge part of content strategy. Nowadays, more and more so, and I think rightly so, is that yeah, you want to be you want to be seen as authentic, right? And again, you know, podcasts podcasts are just a great outlet to do that when you do it well. Yeah, it just hits that sweet spot of authenticity, absolutely. Which I feel like that's going to be the headline of this episode is just like nurturing authenticity for institutions, like through podcasting. So it hits that sweet spot, and then, like you said, like it it elevates the way that something comes across better than writing, but then like video, like the production level required to keep someone engaged for a story like that and everything. Like it's either going to be like, what am I going to stare at this person talking for like an hour? Like probably not. So it's going to be like, Oh, we're going to have to really like cut it short and kind of like condense it down so that somebody can like, you know, watch this or throw in a bunch of B roll and edit and do all this, you know, sort of high production, whatever it's like, it's the sweet spot of that. It's going to get the message across. It gives it sort of the room to breathe. And it's like the production, I think, even while, like I said, there is that sort of like, just enough of kind of learning curve, people are going to be a little bit like wary of like, how do I start this? How do I get something going? Like, once you kind of get over that initial hump of producing a podcast, like, one, you can do that sort of, you know, getting over that hump pretty quickly, but it's also like pretty cheap. And again, it doesn't require like, so many people simultaneously sort of convening to produce a, you know, high quality video and those sort of things. So it's like that idea of like, like you said, as part of the content strategy, you know, it can achieve something really powerful that just would almost feel in a lot of other sort of situations, like impossible. Like you'd, you'd maybe feel like we can't really do this because we couldn't really do it in writing. We couldn't do it in video and those sort of things. So yeah, it's just, a, a, it's a really great way to put it and a very powerful example as well. Yeah, and I'll give two two other examples within the university podcasting context <clears throat> about authenticity. So, so we also work on two podcasts that are with presidents. One is with Oberlin College and Conservatory, and the other one is with Middlebury College. These podcasts are hosted by the presidents, and you know, largely speaking, you know, they are ways for the president to connect with their community and to also show you know how how the president thinks and how they see the world and like what's important and, and what matters to them and again there's just this we done well there's this authenticity factor to better understand okay who is this who is the president of your college or university you know i just like oftentimes i just think even when I was a student, who who thinks about the president? Not not, not that often. Not, you know, not that often. And usually, when the president comes up in some conversation, it's like something not so good, right? So again, alpha authenticity, authentic storytelling for presidents. Another example will be like maybe in like an admissions student life department. It's about highlighting the student experience, and then okay, cool. You have some examples where you have students interviewing other students or students interviewing, you know, their, their teachers, students interviewing prospective students. And it really provides then this new lens that's coming f directly from the students who, who is, yeah, who, who is having all these experiences without kind of the, I guess, filter is a good word, like filter of like a university central communications voice, right? 
It's like, okay, here's a real experience behind the scenes, which is just much more powerful and relevant to prospective students. Yeah, because I think that's a good way to put it too, that like filter, like while it's not as if there is unfiltered, it is like, I'm trying to think of like the right metaphors, like the the nature of the filter is not so sort of like microscopic where like nothing gets, through. it's like, there's still going to be obviously like kind of a scene in the box, you know, that people are kind of playing in, in these sort of situations. But like, yeah, I mean, like, you know, why authenticity is important is it like, it's sort of, yeah, making kind of more kind of get through it's more genuine and that like personal sort of approachable, like I'm trying to think of all the words, the feelings that are sort of coming to mind as you're describing that. And and I like that it can be all the way from like the president at the top, making that person feel much more personal and approachable and authentic down to a prospective student. Who's like, is this a place where I'm going to belong and all that? Like, and that feels like very sort of like down to earth, right down to just sort of that, just the nuts and bolts of like, what is this going to be like for me? Like, I need to know, what is another experience experiencing, you know, how do they navigate this institution or whatever else? So like, you know, like you said, like even with a show being led by a president, it may even be where it's like, I listen to it all the time. It's so great, whatever, as like a member of that community. And it's like, I've never met the person and those sort of things. But again, it just kind of reshapes where like what I was thinking of when you were saying that too, it's like, oh yeah, I knew who the president was when I was an undergrad, but like it was only for bad reasons. And it's almost like if they're doing a good job, they're probably not going to know the person or not know enough about those things. It's always just kind of that negativity bias or sort of like that, you know, kind of nature of those sort of things that kind of get kind of pulled to the top more often. So yeah, there's like that really interesting sort of spectrum of how it sort of brings everything back to kind of like a center through that awesome authenticity. So like that institutional community just feels a lot smaller. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And so the last question, I think just for, you know, because I love that you've been just name dropping examples of like all the different shows that you work on, because it's amazing because obviously there's so many different institution types and regions and different kinds of shows and everything. So I was just sort of open the door. Any other ones that you want to mention that maybe just have innovative, creative, unique approach to how they do their show, you know, because again, it can be hitting on so many different kind of functional areas or pieces of the institution or, you know, you have the president's hosting it or just some other person, just anything else that comes to mind that you'd like to kind of just show and tell so that folks kind of have some more inspiration. Yeah, yeah, I'll have a few examples. Uh, another one that we produce is with Howard University. It's called From HU to You, number two to you. And that's the you know first podcast that we've worked with the HBCU on, and that podcast is special in terms of like the audience it's trying to reach, just because of the Howard brand. The podcast, yeah, is for the higher community, but it's it's just for a wider lens of Black culture in the U.S. and even internationally. That podcast is going to be launched in September, and the first episode. Is a really amazing one with the dean of the, I believe, arts and like performing arts school. So that's one. Another example. So this is not this one we don't produce. I'd say this is Purdue with Kate Young, is really well over at Purdue University, done really well. They have really high production value. They have a killer strategy with their video aspect of the podcast. And a highly another one, I'd say the University of Chicago with Matt Hodup and his team over there. So they have a whole University of Chicago podcast network, which is not something you see very often at university campuses, but something that I think makes a lot of sense to have, which which is that, hey, many universities, the bigger ones, have so many shows that already exist. It's just very siloed. And why why not you know work to bring together underneath a consistent brand experience uh, where also they can help, you know, each other as shows you know grow and expand so i think university of chicago does that really well so this is a professor podcast uh done over at uh, stanford university called think fast talk smart um and that that podcast is just has really high listenership really great appeal not not just to u.s audiences but international audiences that podcast is all about communications and they found this very unique, like little, I, I guess, I guess, 
data data discovery points where a lot of their listeners come from India. And that's because a lot of the listeners in India listen to that show to practice their English comprehension or to even just learn how to be better at speaking English. So now they're actually putting together like a supplemental little like course, uh, I don't know, like course resources for these people learning English from listening to this podcast. So that's just a totally different avenue, right? So what I just highlighted, you know, this professor podcast, the podcast network, a video strategy, and then a kind of the place that podcasts can play in the broader context of culture. Yeah, incredible. I, I tip my imaginary hat to you. And yeah, I mean, it just, that's exactly kind of what I wanted is like the the diversity of, you know, who's the host, what's the goal, how to, you know, the format and sort of, you know, production values. Cause I think, you know, it's like, you could just be audio. You could do video and audio. You could do just video for clips or whatever else you want to do. And yeah, I mean, and I think just the way that if you do it right, it's not as if like this show is only relevant to people who have some connection to that institution. It can be, it can really kind of exist outside of those bounds as well because it's just good content um and then it's, you know even though it's like oh well this isn't gonna like help us achieve our goals of recruiting more prospective students or whatever it's like yeah but like i don't know like there's just sort of the like meta sort of larger influence or just sort of brand identity where it's like you can't even know the positive impact it's gonna have years from now because the right person listened to it at the right time and all that kind of stuff so really quick sorry yeah <clears throat> as well mention for for podcasts, what I recognize is for podcasts outside of the university space, probably the top KPI they look at is like down number, right? Which is fine. But what I recognize working with the university is depending on the department, there's like higher priority KPIs. Say, for instance, with like alumni, alumni podcasts, the top top KPI may not be download numbers but maybe like number of high priority alum or high priority donors, right? That they feature or engage through the podcast, right? I mean, with the students, student podcast, the mission podcast, like number one KPI may not be downloads is more so how many people like submit applications who mentioned the podcast being one of the reasons like they, they got to know the, the, the school. Right. Um, so that's just to say like, Hey, Depending, you have to be very clear on why you're making the podcast and like what the goals of it are and who it's for in order for it to have legs and like actually be consistent and, and have a long life. Yes. Well put. And I think, yeah, you just have to like figure out what that is. And I think, because yeah, it makes me think of like alumni where it's just like, well, there's only so many alumni <laughs> that we have. Like, so there is like a ceiling. So the idea of like, while you do want it to grow, I think that is like a secondary or tertiary kind of goal that you see like growth over time because it's going to be, you know, potentially kind of a just sort of grassroots effort that you're sort of building up and everything. But yeah, predominantly you'd want to make sure that you're, you know, using it as a vehicle to have people on as guests or, you know, those sort of things. So good food for thought for people. But as we wind down, I'll just sort of serve up, you know, whether it is like stuff you're looking forward to or whatever other final thought call to action that you want to share to wrap up the episode. The floor is yours. All right. We are releasing our own podcast called The Word on Campus. It's a a podcast for university podcasters or communicators, or I guess people looking, thinking about making a podcast. Basically what we're doing, you know, I'm the host and we're interviewing amazing university podcast examples, you know, either the hosts or the producers to get a behind the scenes look of how they made that show happen. I think there's a lot of unique challenges working on a, uni- on a university podcast, like getting buy-in and like who you work with, you know, on your team, uh, balancing different, different, I guess, priorities and like who as guests you feature and what you'd be talking about. And so we're just digging a deep dive into the world of university podcasting for anybody who wants to really learn how they made it happen. So the word on campus coming out soon. Check it out. And I guess one more thing. I 
you know, if by any chance you're making it out to the Higher Ed Symposium hosted by the American Marketing Association in November, I'll be there too. So, yeah, give me a give me a shout out. <laughs> Love it. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, I think that's an incredible idea for uh, a podcast because I'm imagining too, just what we were talking about that, like, you know, how people have like navigated like the culture on their campus for any number of things. Like one could be that idea of like all the other boxes are checked where they're like, yeah, you know, like we've come up with a really great concept and all these other things. But then if it is sort of like, you know, the filtering where there's like too many sort of like bureaucratic kind of restrictions and all that, where they're like, you know, yeah, just experiencing those sort of restrictions and everything that like just people talking shop yeah we're getting to a point where there's kind of a critical mass of people kind of playing around in this space so i'll definitely be excited to check that out and yeah absolutely call to action to folks if you're going to ama symposium for higher education yeah i know that's going to be a great event and uh, look up roberts while you're there but thank you so much for hanging out and sharing all that you did and we'll have ways to uh, connect with you and university fm in the description for the episode but um yeah always great chatting with you Hey y'all, Zach here from Enrollify. If you like this podcast, chances are you'll like other Enrollify shows too. Our podcast network is growing by the month and we've got a plethora of marketing, admissions, and higher ed technology shows that are jam packed with stories, ideas, and frameworks that are all designed to empower you to become a better higher ed professional. Our shows feature a selection of the industry's best as your hosts. Learn from Mickey Baines, Jeremy Tears, Jamie Hunt, Corinne Myers, Jamie Gleason, and many, many more. You can learn more about the Enrollify Podcast Network at podcasts.enrollify.org. Our shows help higher ed marketers and admissions professionals find their next big idea. Find yours at podcasts.enrollify.org.